Uh, I had to take a side project repairing my Texun PL880 AM FM shortwave long wave receiver. Uh, this is the second time I made this video now because the first time I made so many mistakes I just I couldn't leave it online. I'm going to take bits of that one, add it to this, and re upload this because it is full of lots of mistakes. I was really tired when I made that video. And I apologize if you saw that one first, but uh, we're going to delve into this a little bit more clearly now and hopefully do a little bit more progressively here too, not such a long drawn out video. So what happened is this radio, I believe now, well this is the second time this happened, uh, the, um, the uh, amplifier uh, front end transistor for medium wave and long wave died. It died a dead short. Now how that happened at first was really confusing to me because I couldn't figure out if it was from lightning strike nearby or stack electricity or what I ended up figuring it was from was a nearby radio transmitter that just simply overpowered the input of this radio. And so, this radio, which I now have basically repaired, let me get this here where it's able to be seen easily, 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 uh, I went through a bunch of fill defect transistors, FETs, because this has an FET front end, and the original one was an SMD transistor which was located right there forgive my camera because it's just a phone that's all I have to work with at the moment for a camera now I, I tried using um, some uh, basic through hole parts I went through all these trying them I had and I'll, I'll show probably a clip of this too from my previous video I had soldered test leads coming out of here so I can jump them off to a uh, board to uh, test various transistors very various ideas because one of my ideas was to use a uh, bipolar transistor in place of the FET transistor what you'd probably think well that's a goofy idea you know why not just replace it with the original FET well the FET transistor in this, which is a BF510, is no longer in production. It's an obsolete part, and more than likely anything I'm going to find online is going to be fakes, you know, from China. So, next best case scenario is to use another FET substitute. That's its own problem. Uh, it's very hard to find a substitute online, at least as far as I could find it would replace the BF510 until I later discovered that Linear Systems now makes their own substitute which is the LSBF510 I believe I'll leave it in the description so uh, what I did here is I took the original FET you know you got your gate source and drain it's the BF510 and I replaced it you can see this circle area is the FET well, I replaced it with this circled area, or at least I tested it on one of these boards. Um, replacing the base of this bipolar with gate, emitter to source, collector to drain, and I just simply biased the, the uh, transistor about halfway. And I uh, put some uh, capacitance so it acts like a gate instead of a base of a bipolar. And so I ended up with using, uh, or trying rather, 2SC3113, which is an extremely high gain transistor with, uh, well, anyway, uh, I guess high beta, beta, whatever. I use a resistance of 470 for biasing it, capacitance of 0.1 microfarad, nothing special there. It worked. Uh, it actually replaced the FET that was originally in here but it didn't quite have the gain that the original FET did and that was the same experience I had 
with every single one of these other FETs I replaced it with, or tested it with. So, my thought is, what's so special about the original FET transistor in here? Which now, by the way, I, I did replace. And there's a story behind that. I, I replaced it with a 2SK932, which is an SMD part. There's this one problem with that SMD part. Uh, the pinout's different. I had to flip the part upside down compared to the original. Solder it in into a different position besides the original pad for, I believe it was the gate of the original one. I had to solder down towards the resistors, uh, resistor capacitor right there, which I'll show a second in the schematic. So I had to flip the uh, 2SK932 upside down and sideways to make it fit where the BF510 originally did. And here's the good news. The replacement part I found works. It has roughly the same gain, if not slightly even more gain than the original FET, or I shouldn't say gain, uh, there's, uh, I think it's called transconductance, something like that. I'll uh, put a little thing in, in uh, the video. Um, what that, I guess, means is uh, the higher the number, uh, means uh, it takes less voltage change at the gate to make a larger current change on the output and you want a really high number because all we're doing here with the radio is the loop stick antenna is back here which can't really see I guess you can see the coil right there but that comes up and it just basically gets uh, grounded from one side of the coil and then ran to the gate of the FET. This is the original schematic for the PL880 Texune radio. Uh, now, I, maybe it's not the original schematic, this might be uh, reverse engineered, somebody might have did, and if you did, thank you very much for putting this online. This is the AM stage right here. Scroll up. This is the antenna jack that comes into the radio. Uh, you can find this schematic online. You just have to look around. Or maybe I can link in if people are curious. This is um, one half of the switch. It's also down here. Uh, that's the uh, RF gain control. The stage for um, uh, the ferret bar antenna. I mean, you got your loop stick antenna, ferret bar, whatever you want to call it. Uh, right here, uh, it goes to the ground on one side. The other side goes directly into the gate of the BF510 front end FET transistor. Uh, source just goes on to 33 ohm and a capacitor to ground. I believe that's maybe for parasitics or in case of oscillates or something which I also believe is why there's the second coil out of phase which comes out of the drain up to the power source. I believe the top coil, like I said, it's got to be there because I think it just causes negative feedback so the thing doesn't go in oscillation. But basically what's happening here is the FET is just amplifying the coil. The coils just run, you know, the ferret bar. And then of course you got the drain going out out to uh, the next stage which is you know way out there the mixer stage and all that stuff for the radio uh, this is the other half of that that switch you know for local uh, long distance listening the X listening whatever all this is is just your voltage comes down through here gets filtered goes to the switch different resistance settings change the uh, base of this transistor which has been grounded and this acts as a clamp through 1k ohm capacitor to the gate so this is just basically acting like this transistor is acting like a variable resistor to cut the gain of the gate of the uh, input stage now uh, there's a problem here and a lot of these radios, I've noticed, uh, what happens is 
if you have too much AC voltage, RF voltage, across this coil, which means if you're in a you know near field of a uh, broadcast transmitter, high powered AM transmitter, maybe it was my CB radio. I'm not. I'm still really not 100% sure what caused this. But I felt like it was probably my broadcast transmitter being too close to it, which fried it. So there's no protection here. Uh, you know, this can develop such a high voltage just from being in the vicinity of a transmitter that you're just going to feed the gate of this poor FET so much it's going to short it. And that's exactly what happened. When I uh, tested the transistor out of circuit, or even when I tested in circuit, I noticed there was, and this is how I figured out that this was the problem, it was shorted from drain to source completely. <laughs> I mean, a dead short. So it was dumping the voltage, the AM power voltage here, through an RF choke, uh, through the coil, directly through the transistor. 33 on the ground. It was dumping the uh, I think 2. Point, is it 2.7 volts or something like that. Input power basically down the ground. The only thing that was saving the battery and the radio and the regulator stages up there is this 33 ohm resistor, which is kind of spooky. I didn't look at the part number on the voltage regulator that regulates the voltage coming in. Maybe uh, that part has some protection, I would hope. Because otherwise I would imagine without this resistor, which didn't seem to burn up, but without that, this being a dead short would have killed more than just the buffer transistor right there. The same stage we just looked at, except what I'm doing here now, in this circumstance, I haven't yet added this yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to take two 1N 4148 diodes and use them as clamps across the uh, ferret bar antenna. And that will go across AM2 and AM1 connections, which is going to be AM2 right there and AM1. I'm going to put two diodes back to back there. That should protect this from ever happening again. I hope. One other modification I did to this radio, which I'm sure is glaringly making people question right now, what is this? I tried to, tried to uh, use external antennas on this for medium wave. Now that's not what killed this, by the way. I didn't have it hooked up to an external antenna when this went bad. And it oddly does still work with an external antenna even without the input stage FET because this bypasses it. This is simply going from the input jack right over here through a 0.1 capacitor. I just taped it so it wouldn't short out on anything. And then that tacks to AM3 terminal right there. So from ground to AM3 through a capacitor. I did that because the original modification a lot of people did to this was just wrapping a piece of wire around the loop stick and then doing it that way to couple in an external antenna. You can do that too. I just find the capacitor method just seems to have a better chance at having more gain from an external antenna and then it's not going to have issues with the external antenna being better on certain frequencies than others because of the coil length or wrapping inductance. So, hopefully this will be a better explanation, and, and just to give you an idea of how small SMD parts are compared to, for those that don't really know, this right here is an LSK-170 microphone preamplifier transistor, kind of a valuable one. This actually worked in the radio as a replacement, but it didn't have enough gain, transconductance, or... Uh, Probably using the wrong word. Anyway, uh, I tried all these, but an actual SMD part. <laughs> I mean, let's do a size comparison here. You can kind of see, even this is a small, 
volts type transistor and if I point uh, like that right there would be about the size of an SMD transistor that I replace in here which you can kind of see right there and like I said I had to flip that upside down and sideways to get the pin out to work because this is the pin out right here the original BF510 this is top view source drain gate and then 2SK932 gate drain source flip it upside down and sideways so kind of what I had to do there now I got the uh, transistor replacement for this because that's all I had to work with it actually was equivalent I had to actually buy like 10 parts online for 10 15 20 dollars I uh, got the part from this board which came off of, and this is kind of a funny story, came off of this board, which if you look at that jack right there, it might give it away what this came from. This was the main board, part of it, from a Pioneer Super Tuner car radio. That transistor that's in the Tech Tune radio right now is the input AM stage of the Pioneer Super Tuner car radio and that came off of this board which was mounted like that now how it came to be a, to use this part is I was looking through my boneyard of parts and I'm like well where am I gonna find an FET transistor that has the right specifications to replace the original in this guy and then I'm like well wait a minute maybe old car radios you know cuz they use uh, a whip antenna basically or an antenna in the windshield I guess to uh, pick up AM broadcast so they must have a sensitive input FET transistor right for the front end turns out I was right but there's one problem uh, with SMD parts the part codes on them are pretty vague and so I didn't know I knew this was a tuner board and I knew I had a bunch of SMD transistors, but I didn't know what was a field effect transistor or bipolar, what the hell the parts were. So I'm like, how am I going to do this? Believe it or not, I started with looking up this number of this board online. Found out what the actual car radio was, because I didn't even remember where this came from exactly. And I looked up that. Lo and behold, they actually have schematics, entire uh, service manuals for Pioneer car stereos online. So I found the uh, schematic for this model, uh, brought up the schematic, and found the part number for the FET on this board. And I'm like, well, oh my god, are you kidding me? We have a front end transistor that's designed for AM reception. And then I compare the values to the BF510. Lo and behold, they're pretty damn similar. So I, before I dropped it in here, I tested it by using my jumper wires and it worked. So I'm like, well, how am I going to mount it? And then of course I already told you guys I had to flip it upside down and sideways to make the pin out work. But here we go, I got a working radio again. Own medium wave. Oh. Well, a little awkward here. You're alive. It's night time right now, so there's a lot of DX. We got 1100. Stay out. I believe we all know what that is. That sound. So yeah, yeah, it's working. Thanks for watching.